Mm-hmm. And we're both from Compton. And, and, and that's a struggle because we came from something. a rough place. Absolutely. And when we tell people where we're from, they look at us like, you don't look like you, you from Compton. Or, or you did, or she made it, or she, you know, every day is still a struggle, but we're doing it because we were determined. We don't, in our industry, and I don't think just ours, but I can speak on it because we're in this industry, we don't share enough information. Yeah. And it's small things like that that actually matter. So because I already went through it, I'm like, oh, my God, let me make sure you do this because yes. you can get, you you going down there speaking to management. They're going to know you ain't never did it before when they run your credit. They're going to see you ain't never leased no commercial. Exactly. So, you know, just to give you a heads up. And I was happy for you because you were battling, do I get the house or do I get the salon? Or, right. You know, and you weren't even really ready for the salon. But I'm like, okay, let's talk about math. You're going to buy the house and you're going to have this mortgage. The mortgage is going to keep you stuck in the solar. You don't like the solar because your clientele too big. That part. That, you did. You helped me figure it out. Yeah. So, so get the salon. Make more money because now you got bigger space. you got more people coming in. You can get hired. Yes. Hire some folks. Now I can really pay the mortgage that I really want to pay instead of having to get you this. You helped me with that. You did. Because I was asking but I was just kind of in a... in a. It was. I had ambivalent feelings about it. It was mixed emotions. Right. Like, and, you know, it's one of those things where you, you're comfortable and trying to get out of your comfort zone. But I think that's how I thrive is that I'm able to, if I be somewhere too long, you know, I told you how the energy went wrong. Yeah. You you was at a solar salon. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, you were saying they were hating on you. You know, like I was telling them, they was hating on me laughing. Right. They were hating on you because you had a way bigger space. And they're trying to figure out how you're able to afford your space. Right, right. But instead of counting your money and what you're doing, why aren't you could be using that same energy? Tell them talking to the haters. Mm-hmm. You could use that same energy towards... Getting the bigger spot. Getting Absolutely. More. Let me ask you a question about um, when you purchased the salon. Yeah. When you went, after we talked, and you actually made the decision to go, you know, talk to them and the things and look at, like the Waha water heater and all that kind of stuff. When you sat down with them and you told, tried to negotiate, did you feel comfortable? Did you feel confident in your negotiation? Well, when you I'm going to tell you, the things that let, you me, let me tell you something. Now, you know I'm a black girl from the hood. I had a white lady. She was my leasing agent. She was a broker. Mm-hmm. You know, that guy is Jewish. He don't even know how I looked until way later after we didn't sign contract. He, we, he wasn't even there to sign the contract. Mm-hmm. He didn't even know how I looked. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it was where I kind of told her what I wanted. She was my broker. So mm-hmm. she was my, she the my one that, mm-hmm. yeah, she the one that, and then that's the thing. And, he, and then the owner, he had his broker. So it was the brokers who were, communicating right and we on the sideline we like well I want this we tell I'm telling Leslie Mm -hmm. and when I tell you Leslie is such a freaking bulldog like I love her because she has heart like she's like okay I'm I'm gonna get I'll I'll get that okay I'm I'm gonna tell them you know Mm -hmm. I'm gonna gonna do this we're gonna have that okay oh that's not in there and she would even look at the contracts too and be like oh yeah they did leave that out Mm -hmm. because even when I told them during negotiation what I wanted and when we got the final contract And I had a lawyer, remember I told you about the prepaid legal service? I had them look over it, and it was like, that wasn't in there, Mm -hmm. what you wanted. That wasn't in there. Right. You know what I mean? Because it was still a standard contract. Mm -hmm. They didn't even, the girl, they barely changed anything. Right. That's what happened with me. When I I bought my my salon a little different. I purchased my salon. It was already up and running. Mm -hmm. Um, And I purchased it from the previous owner. It looked like she... She told me she had an attorney. I think mm-hmm. she has someone who um, dabbles in law, mm-hmm. and they Googled a contract, because I actually found the same exact contract. And she had all these things in, in there that absolutely made no sense towards the What the, she was doing, because it was just It was right. just, right. Ooh. So what I did was, um, my husband encouraged me to hire an attorney. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know about the preparatory services then, mm-hmm. but we hired an attorney. And um, I didn't want to. Because it was so expensive. But you had to, girl. But you know what he explained to me? And this is something else they don't teach you in school. When you're in business. I gotta go like this. It costs to be the boss. You gotta spend money in order to make money. So while everybody is telling you, oh, girl, no, it's a shortcut to this. No, shortcuts will end you to a dead end. Mm. They don't teach you none of that in school, you know what I mean? And And they don't teach you about contracts. I, I didn't even know anything about the leasing agreement situation until... You told me. You right. said, Amber, ask for some months free. Right. And then you gave me the example. Would you tell me about the Office Depot or 
Staple, somebody, they, they lease something for five years free. Some crazy shit oh, you told me. Oh, well, my Sola, from my understanding, my Sola was leasing for, uh, I, I heard it was 10 years. I'm not exactly sure how many years it really is. They got to uh, lease for free. Um, for how many years? I, it, supposedly, it's supposed to be for 10 years. Oh. And you know what will bother me? Because I had someone call me and say, I have a question to ask you, Monique. This was a client. Mm -hmm. I said, what is it? And she said, I want to know, how are you able to afford that salon? That's when I first opened here. How are you able to afford it and you don't have clientele like that? I said, well, how do you know what type of clientele that I have? She was like, well, you know, I was in the solo. I would see, you know, and you weren't never as busy as my stylist. I said, because I work smart, not hard. Mm. I, I invest in myself. Yeah. When you see me tagging myself in these classes, mm -hmm. that's where my prices come from. I'm not just th making up these prices off the top of my head saying that a weave is $300. That's cheap compared to some people I know. It, oh, I, I for know, sure. I know my, my, what my extensions right now are 325 mm -hmm. but I know people that I've actually worked for, weaves are $500. Six they honey. start at that price, but, and that might not include a cut or whatever. But I know somebody that was charging that, and they back working at their house. It don't matter. Mm -hmm. You can't pay someone. Smart. You can't pay someone enough money to care. You're right. That's why we're in business You're because right. the the person that we bring once they get in our chair, what happened? They they with us for they with us. Right. Unless they move or you know unless circumstances change, but it's like we know how to keep them man, right because we and care. It, and I feel like this is a revol This industry could be a revolving door. It's so much more to hair mm -hmm. than the style. It's about the customer service. Mm -hmm. It's about um, you caring their birthdays, you know, reaching out, their anniversaries. When you get personal, because this is a, per we're like, their, we are their doctor. We're their hair Therapist, doctor. yep. You know, so we have to deal with all these different personalities throughout the day, and we become attached. Yes. And when it's not just about the money, you know, and it's more about the person, mm -hmm. they appreciate you, and the lo that's what creates the loyalty. And like I was explaining to her, you know, it it's working smart and not working so hard. Like, I literally, I've worked in salons where people are there from dusk to dawn. You making all this money, but you don't get to spend it. I have a family, so yeah. I have to go home and be with my eight year old. Yeah. I have a husband if I want to keep him. I have things. That I <laughs> if you want to keep him, right. you gotta go home be a husband. We have working hours. <laughs> right. We're open from nine to seven. Right. And and that's just how it is because guess what? You can't let your clients control you. But then again, that's things that they don't tell you in cosmetology. And that's let's get into that. Yeah. The things that you learned being out of school, what are some of the things that they didn't teach you in beauty school that you had to learn on your own? Everything. Um, keeping it real, I have a daughter that went to cosmetology school and I tried to encourage her to go to Vidal Sassoon. And the only reason why I wanted her to do that is because I wanted her to understand business. Mm -hmm. And she's not really interested in going to college. These are just the things that I heard. In cosmetology school, they taught me how to pass state board. That's it. That was all I learned, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and then a lot of times, well, I went to a cosmetology school in the hood, so in Inglewood. Mm. So they couldn't the teach me. No, I went to Contempo. Oh, okay. So they couldn't teach me something that they didn't know. Mm. They didn't have a business plan. They mm. didn't have, you know what I mean? So for me. They, did they own their own salon, any of them? Not at the time. No, they just owned the school, you mm. know, and then the, what, it ended up shutting down. And not to say they had bad business practices. It's just that how do you know what to ask for if you don't know what to do? Like, I don't know how to ask you, how do I create a business plan if I don't know I need a business plan? Or how do, should I booth run or commission? Now, my cosmetology school didn't teach us neither one of those. Right. They just taught you past day board and you mm -hmm. were on your own. Right. And You're thrown to the wolves. Yeah. So, um, it took me, honestly, to move out of L.A. Um, and I started working in a diverse hair salon mm -hmm. that made me want the type of business that I'm running now. So... Back to your question, what did they not teach me? They really didn't teach me anything but how to pass their board. So, so they, didn't, they didn't give you any type of skills on how to be an entrepreneur if you want to own your own salon? Never. They, they never want... No. Uh, no. And <laughs> entrepreneur, I think I might have heard that when I got with my husband. Because <laughs> he's an entrepreneur. Yeah. So I, right. yeah, that wasn't even pretty much talked about. Right. It was more booth money. That was the objective. Uh -huh. booth you're going to do hair, you're going to be a booth renter, you're going to pay $125 and you're going to make buku money. See, but that's not, to me, that's, that's to each his own. the beginning. Yeah, and that's not easy. even part of the beginning. Right. There's two different ways of having a salon. You can have a booth renter salon where you're just the landlord, 
or you can have a hair salon or a commission stylist where you're the boss. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. It is a big difference. And in California, people don't understand. If people, everyone in your salon is a booth runner, you are not their boss. They're independent contractors. Yeah, absolutely. And you cannot tell them what to go, where, how, when to come to work. Or you can't how to anything. dress, nothing. So you lose control. You lose absolute control. And even if you don't want to be a control freak, it's still about bringing in income. Mm -hmm. You have a set salary at Booth Rent. Right so if I had eight people in here, my Booth Rent right now is two twenty five a week. I have a set uh, salary cap. Now, if I want to keep the people, I can only stay, um, go up on my rent every so many years. Because once I keep going up, they're going to be like, oh, hell no. Exactly. I'm not sharing my money. Especially when they used to. They're not going to want to come to the salon meetings. They're not going to want to sell retail. They're going to want to do their own thing. Right. And that's what makes them independent contractors. And they're not, they're not going to be part of your brand. Mm -hmm. The hair cafe the is, is a brand. Same. It's not. It's not the Exactly. Same. So now you might find some who will participate, but... Now, Probably do you think eight. about once you really kind of start, like, kind of like halfway retiring, maybe you could do the booth rent thing? Cause you no, don't be there absolutely not. Okay. No, I will still have commission. I don't have to be here for commission. They, there will be a manager like we have now. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a business. Right. So, you you know, you know when, I'm, when I'm not behind the chair anymore, um, we will still have a commission salon. Right. They didn't teach us retail. My cosmetology school did not teach now, me. Now, now, talk, let's talk about that because you're really good with that. Like that, pro that helps pay a lot of the bills. The Absolutely. Retail, people who don't. Well, know. you had said that it pays a bill. It pays a lot of my. Bill. Actually, it pays my staff. Mm. What happens is, what I learned um, because I went and got my degree. I had a plan. I said before I ever open up a salon because you can run across the money to open a salon any day. Yeah. But the reason why retail is so major and a lot of vendors. And um, just depending on where you where your demographics are, mm -hmm. where your salon is, and how you're running it. So what re retail does for me is I purchase it at this dollar amount. I sell it, I double up, possibly. Mm -hmm. um, so if I buy it for ten dollars, I'm gonna sell it for probably twenty four dollars. Mm -hmm. Now the company will give you a, a a guide on how to sell your product. Mm -hmm. Now with that, my staff gets quarterly. They get. 10 to 15 percent that's a check that they get and all they had to do was use what they had on the back bar to tell them here this is what's good for your hair right. not lying to them everything that we use on the back bar is what you're going to sell what I'm, what I'm going to sell them Absolutely. so every quarter I have one um stylist um she her quarterly checks would be like four hundred dollars mm. Just off of the Just retail. Work for retail. That's why she didn't even have to work for that. She didn't have to pass out a card. Yeah. She didn't have to do anything. So that's why you're saying retail is important. Absolutely, because it's bringing the business money in, mm -hmm. and they're getting paid. So everyone's happy. Mm -hmm. Everyone's happy, and the business is functioning. You you understand what I'm saying? So when there's time that it's slow, because I have products um, that people just come off the streets. Because the company that I'm with, they let people know when you Google and it. And they can't, they can't just purchase that anywhere. Either. Absolutely, they're exclusive. Right. Exactly. You cannot want to be And that's what makes, that's another thing too with retail is that yes. you get with a, a company where it's exclusive. Because they can't buy it online or right. anywhere. They have to come to you right. to do that. And that means that the company cares about the, the, our industry. They Absolutely. make it where we stay in business. What? When you told me you were doing your book, I was like, when I hung up, I probably had two glasses of wine. <laughs> I was like, I'm so proud of It's crazy because when, one thing about you is when every time you've ever told me you were going to do something, you executed it immediately. I don't know if it's the ADD in you, it's but that. you execute immediately. And boredom. Yeah. Like it's always got to have something to do. Something to and you know what? I'm just never satisfied. You know, I'm just like once I get one thing, okay. And that's, I think that's the whole thrill of it all, knowing that I can do it. And that's, I think I get off on that in a way. Okay. I'm like, Oh, let me see if I can do that. Mm -hmm. And then once I do it, I'm like, okay, I got that. Okay, next. Right. And then right. I'm trying to do something else. And then I watch, I look at the formula of mm -hmm. what other people are doing who made it. And I'm like, they put out a book? Oh, I could put out one too. Right. So that's how my brain works. You know what I mean? Instead of me being like, but then, but then, But then you'll have someone that'll be like, um, she only did it because I did it. Well, well my thing know. is they that's true because it's people who I look up to who are mentors that they don't know me, they don't but I know. follow them yeah, yeah, on yeah, social yeah. media. They don't know me. They don't know yeah. where I came from. Yeah. Because they're so big and so up there. But it's okay. My, I guess my point is, is you're writing a book. If I decided I wanted to write a book, I would, I would be you. able. To, I would be I giving you the game right. on how to go about right. doing it. Because right. all I do, all I do is research mm -hmm. and talk to other people who's doing it. 
Like, okay, dang, I can, you know, I can do that. Because we're so much into the grind to where we, we, we kind of, we don't know how far we've came. Mm -hmm. But you got to look back to those days in Compton. You got to look back to those days and be like, well, we've came a long way. Right. And I always say, you know, I don't like really looking back. But sometimes you have to look back to see how far you've come. Absolutely. absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, wow. And, and not one day. No one, nobody that, there's not one soul that know me that don't know. I'm from Compton, California. I'm so proud of my hood. I'm so proud of my city. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm real ghetto, grimy <laughs> type. <laughs> like, I'm, 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 you can I'm be a chameleon that, like, and switch it up too. Absolutely, I can and totally. I did, Welcome to Hair Escapades. Let me help you. You know, I'll throw that on the table. It's a wonderful they think day I'm at the hair cafe. Well, we like, uh, do you do black hair, girl? Yeah, we do black hair. Can I change it up, girl? Yeah, we do black hair. <laughs> Once I figure out who it is, over yeah. the phone. Well, sometimes I have to say, can you just give me the texture of your hair? Like, is it curly? right? Over curly, straight. <laughs> You're like, wait, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, what up? What, what you need? Who you looking for, Monique? <laughs> exactly. But that's just where we are, and I'm proud of us. I'm proud of us. I'm so glad we reconnected. It's amazing how things come full circle. Yeah, I was your play mommy, but now I'm thinking, you my mama. <laughs> you teaching me the game. You know what I mean? So we, we, I, I'm, I'm appreciative of the relationship we have, and in my closing remarks, I'm proud of you. I'm so glad we reconnected, and I don't want it to end.